In a major development, Arizona's Secretary of State, Adrian Fontes, has sent a criminal referral to Arizona's Attorney General, Chris Mays, after Carrie Lake opted to tweet out voter signatures, which Fontes is alleging is a Class 6 felony in the state. Fontes sent out a letter to Mays, wherein the Secretary of State wrote, quote, I'm writing today to ask you to investigate and take appropriate enforcement action against Carrie Lake for potential violations of Arizona law committed under her Twitter handle, Carrie Lake. On January 23rd, 2023, the Carrie Lake account tweeted, Bomb Shell discovery. Today's Senate testimony confirms nearly 40,000 ballots illegally counted, 10% of the signatures reviewed. I think all the election deniers out there deserve an apology. Embedded in the tweet was a graphic containing the images of 16 voter signatures. The relevant law provides in pertinent part, the records containing a voter signature shall not be accessible or reproduced by any person other than the voter. Arizona Revised Statute, Section 16-168F, the protections afforded by this subsection prohibit posting any information derived from voter registration forms or precinct registers to the internet, and under no circumstance may a person other than the voter or a statutorily authorized person reproduce a voter's signature. A violation of this provision is a Class 6 felony. The tweet and embedded graphic are attached for your reference. Therefore, the Secretary of State's office is referring this matter to you for further investigation and possible prosecution. Now, I should note that as far as felonies go, a Class 6 felony is the least severe in Arizona, with punishments ranging from fines all the way to prison sentences of between four months and five years. It's worth noting, too, that just because Fontes sends a criminal referral doesn't mean that she'll be charged by A.G. Mays. As we've seen from congressional referrals, sometimes the A.G. does decide to indict, as was the case with Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro, and sometimes not, as was the case with Mark Meadows and Dan Scavino. With that said, a good way to get indicted is for one of the top officials in the state to send over a referral. So while we should always measure our expectations, what should be obvious is that Carrie Lake left herself in a not so great position if her goal is to stay out of prison. And aside from landing herself in potential legal trouble, there's also the fact that she was wrong. Her tweet claimed that there were 38,909 ballots with signatures that didn't match, only one not so small problem with all of this. According to ABC 15 elections analyst Garrett Archer, those signatures weren't even from this election cycle. Quote, Miss Lake, these signatures are from 2020. They use recent affidavit envelopes to verify as well. That way, if the MVD signature comes across wrong, they have in-house to compare to. So this doesn't confirm anything. Who would have guessed that a woman who traffics in election denialism wouldn't take facts or, well, objective reality seriously. Of course, what's beyond clear is that reality doesn't matter to Carrie Lake. She's tapping into the exact same election denialism that Trump employed during the 2020 election. Carrie Lake is making a strategic play here. She knows that a broad swath of Republican primary voters believe Trump's bullshit lies that the election was stolen, and she also knows that if she spouts the same baseless conspiracy theories that he did, she can try to transpose his support onto her. Does she believe what she's saying? Not a chance in the whole wide world. But does she know that her audience believes it? Absolutely. And she is more than willing to manipulate them to try and help her take power because just like Trump, she views her supporters not as people, but as marks. As far as she's concerned, they are there solely to serve her and not the other way around. And just to give an idea of how bad of a gamble that was, just remember that every single gubernatorial and secretary of state candidate who ran as an election denier in the latest midterm cycle lost. Every single one. Meanwhile, the other Republicans, those who opted to accept objective reality, did pretty well in their respective states, meaning that it wasn't the entire GOP that was repudiated. It it was expressly those Republicans, like Carrie Lake, who decided to make lying about her own loss the cornerstone of her political identity. And so you might be asking yourself, why? Why keep this charade up when you know that you're not going to win? When your actions are poised to land you in legal jeopardy? When the voters have made it clear that they're going to reject you at the ballot box? And the answer here is obvious. She is very clearly vying for Donald Trump's VP slot. That's all. She's trying to show that she's the Trumpiest candidate out there, someone willing to go to the mat, maybe even get sent to prison to prove just how all in on the MAGA agenda she actually is. She doesn't care that she won't get elected in Arizona because she's not trying to get elected in Arizona. She's only auditioning for one person, and that person doesn't even live in her state. He lives in a resort in Florida. I mean, just think about that for a second. This woman is so desperate to be Trump's running mate in 2024 that she's leaning full tilt into a strategy that could even win her an election in a state where Republican governors have been in control for over a decade. She was so extreme that she turned off even Republican voters, all in her bid to prove to one man that she was adequately loyal.
A man, by the way, whose only certainty over the last six years has been that he's burned every single other person who'd acted as a doormat for him before. The only certainty, as far as Donald Trump is concerned, is that he will dump you overboard the moment you're no longer convenient for him. He's done it before, and he will without a doubt change nothing moving forward. Will that change Carrie Lake's mind? Clearly not. Maybe because she's part of the cult, or maybe because she's just that desperate for power for herself that this is the devil's bargain that she's making. But either way, what's clear is that the kind of people who Donald Trump is attracting are just like him. Morally bankrupt, desperate for attention, shameless in their pursuit of power, and devoid of any value principles or governing philosophy. They just want control and nothing less. Of course, if Carrie Lake does get charged and ends up in prison, that might make her long-term plans a little bit more difficult. But then again, she may very well be employing the exact same strategy as Donald Trump, who's currently contending with possible indictments in Fulton County, Georgia, in the Manhattan DA case on campaign finance violations, in the $250 million New York AG case on Trump Org's fraud, in the Mar-a-Lago classified documents case, and in the special counsel's case on January 6th. Turns out that predicate your political career on lawlessness might not allow you to continue that career as long as you'd hoped. So will this gamble pay off for Carrie Lake? I guess that all depends on whether she's able to stay out of prison, whether Trump chooses her as his running mate, whether he gets the nomination, and whether he can even win. All seems like a pretty tall order. But then again, after making herself the most toxic candidate of the 2022 cycle, it doesn't look like she has many other options. At this point, the only sure thing is that whatever strategy Carrie Lake uses always blows up in her face in the end. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.